<laughs> I've watched some of your podcasts and P. Ross is more like the color commentary. You'll you'll kind of say something and then you'll come in with, yeah, right. And he'll add his little tidbit to it. It, it works. Yeah, you have a, 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 a little flavor. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. No? Bring the spice. You know what I'm saying? You like Kool-Aid. I'm like the sugar. Yeah. You know what I mean? Go. Great. Guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of SoCal Watch Reviews. I am Miguel, episode fifty-eight. Uh, we've been doing yeah. the, we've been doing the thing. Happy twenty twenty-one. P. Ross, where are you at? What's going on? I'm right here, man. What's going on? How's everybody doing out there? We back. We in the building. We've been in the building, man. We haven't left. Right. <laughs> Let us out. Right. Let us out. Exactly. We need a break, man. <laughs> hey, P. Mm, Ross. Mm, so, mm. you know what? It's become. Uh, a customary thing now last week we had eric um super nice guy i hear yeah. he's starting his own podcast so we he yeah, loved being on sure. the show so much that he said i am probably starting my own thing good for him oh Wish yeah him no best doubt. Of luck whenever he's ready to start his thing come on down eric and absolutely we will definitely help you promote it but today we got another special guest we've been talking to alton for a long time he's a friend yeah. of ours we just haven't had a chance to have him on the show because of scheduling, you know, conflicts. Right. But anyway, do the official intro, P. Ross. Yo, th this is the official intro. This brother right here, you know, he runs a, a YouTube channel and Instagram page, Half Past Blog. And right now in the building, we have Alton Ruff. Let's go. Man, I love that. I love that. Now, I oh. wish that I could get that on Sunday mornings. Hey. <laughs> I need you to record for me a weekly introduction when I come up to preach. I need I, I that. I need that height. I got you. That would be you. awesome. Just don't, curse, just don't curse, Just don't curse. No, I'm not going to curse. I'm not going to curse. I got Watch you. your damn language, all right? All right. Oh, shoot. There we go. All right. <laughs> love, love it. Love it. Oh, love it. Oh, man. How are you, Alton? I'm doing great, Miguel. It's good to see you guys. Really good to see you. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. Hey, so we obviously, I, I said it already, I'm repeating myself, but we've tried having you on a few times now and for whatever reason because you are a minister um on sunday mornings and that's when we record is just never worked out but today we're recording a little later and thank you for mm -hmm. for coming on um and before i guess before we move on and, and kind of get started you guys want to do a wrist check yeah sure awesome alton what you get alton what do you all want? right i have trouble figuring Alpina. out the cameras no nope. is it Hamilton. 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 Hamilton, Hamilton, Navy, Navy Pioneer. Yeah. See, I knew, ah, see, 43 I know, millimeters I, for the yeah. big-wristed gentleman. Yeah. Love this thing. Yeah, that's nice. I got it on a, a nice, you can't really tell, but it's a blue strap from Watch Gecko. Oh, it's okay. got, got the blued hands. So, yeah. Yeah. What are you guys nice. wearing? P. Ross, what are you rocking? Venice Beerus Military Watch, 1945, I think. On a strap coat nice. strap? On, on a strap coat strap. I yes, could sir. tell. I could tell. Yeah. Well, today yes, I still have the honor of rocking the Islander ISL uh, 40. Um, yeah. Nice watch. I haven't, I, I really don't wear the watches that I review out of respect for the owners, but I, I'm just wearing it for the podcast. I'm going nowhere right. and I'm taking it off right after this. But if you haven't checked out my review, go check it out. It's getting a lot of good traction because I'm the only guy that's reviewed this. So thank you, Mark. Yeah. I appreciate that. Fantastic review. Like, thank I really you. mean it. Your game has just gone up a couple notches. I appreciate that, man. Now, I, I hate I, when people say that to me because they're like, you know, you've been preaching so well lately. I'm like, well, was it crap before? So I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, you've gone from great to no, greater. No, and I, I appreciate that. And and honestly, it's, it's, uh, it's a few things. Number one. I got my camera, my DSLR camera, a little less than a year ago. And, and February is going to be a year. So when I got it last February, I knew nothing about it. I knew I knew how to turn it on and how to press a button, and that's about it. And it was all on automatic. And I didn't even have light. So when I got it, that's why progressively maybe you could see that I get better because I got better equipment and better equipment. Mm. And as of my last three videos or something, I started shooting on manual, so I spent a lot of time on YouTube 
trying to figure out what f-stop was and what the mm-hmm. shutter speed was and iso and i was like what is all this stuff so slowly i've been trying to gain more knowledge and like really shoot manual and that's why i think my mm. visually things have changed but also of course i've learned a, a trick or two right here and there and also i've been trying to step up my game on instagram uh, because again i shoot manual now so everything is i control all the settings before i take the picture and then i edit very very little you know because mm-hmm. i try to do everything before i do so i appreciate that i appreciate the people have taken notice because it's a lot of work but i, I want to keep getting better you know so yeah yes sir That's it. thank you guys thank you yeah. um so why don't why don't we uh do a quick uh intro elton just let the people know who you are and and, and you know who, who we're talking to and then we'll go into the questions yeah because probably nobody knows who i am come on man <laughs> except for a few guys um yeah I, I i got into watches about three years ago and then i started an instagram page a couple of years ago it was it was a cold january much like today okay. cold january day and i don't know about you but i try to talk to my wife about watches ah uh, yeah yeah. It does not yep. go well. It no. does not. Right. No. Her eyes glaze over and I just see the, you know, I and don't so care. I like, yeah, yeah. So who cares? <laughs> I don't know a single person that cares about watches around me. I only know a few that actually wear them and they're most are mostly older gentlemen. And um, so I thought I'm going to start an Instagram page and start taking shots of my watches. And that's how it all kind of got started. And then okay. around this time last year, I started in a, a YouTube channel because I thought I'm having so much fun with the Instagram. Why not explore this a little bit further, start the YouTube. And I'm really glad I did because 2020 was a kind of an interesting year. And the YouTube channel was a great way to make some good connections and make right. some healthy connections and kind of stay out of trouble and stay in a good mindset. Great Absolutely. stuff on your YouTube channel, man. I, I know you just hit 400 subs, but honestly, yeah. in, in my, my humble opinion, you and p ross and even me i think we put in so much work and we pour our hearts and souls that i really feel like we need more subscribers and the amount of work that goes into these videos i mean you guys know yeah. <clears throat> all oh, the yeah, yeah. all the research and everything and what's interesting to me is there's channels out there out of this niche right so reviewing toys or doing a blog and they have so many subscribers and you could tell that their quality is just not great you know so it's it's right. kind of uh kind of upsetting that what we do we have to do so much research and editing mm-hmm. and, and whatnot and, and the reward is just not there but i guess at the end of the day we got to look at it as a hobby and just yeah. something that we like to do but it, it's nice to be rewarded right it's like you don't go to work to not get paid you don't go to work for <laughs> right, fun right. you go to work to yeah. to get rewarded and I know I've said it before, like this shouldn't be looked at as work, but unfortunately it is because we get time taken away from our family. Right. Oh, and yeah. like I said, oh, all yeah. the money that I've invested on my equipment, I don't even know when I'm going to make my money back, to be honest with you. So, and all my time, you know, I, I was telling P Ross, mm-hmm. I kind of felt bad. Um, so I have a five-year-old boy. Right. And uh, I kind of felt bad that uh, I've been spending so much time, like so much time recording, taking pictures, editing, and he's there just playing by himself. And I just completely ignore him. And I'm going to look back and be like, you know what? I missed all those years because of this YouTube thing. And it just didn't make any sense. So typically what I do on Saturday mornings, that's my record day, right? I spend mm-hmm. three, four hours recording a bunch of B-roll. And yes, it takes that long just to record a B-roll. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, I'm babysitting him because my wife goes to work and I just don't really pay attention to him. This, yeah. this is the truth i'm admitting it but yesterday <laughs> i did something different i was like you know what i'm just not going to take out my camera i'm not going to talk about watches i'm just going to pay attention to them and i did we had a good time we played i mm. fed them you know my wife got here she was happy that i really was just paying attention to them mm. but then in the night when everything was kind of winding down nobody wanted to watch a movie my wife got her book out she started reading my son started playing his video game and i was like all right well I guess this is my time. Then mm-hmm. I spent about three hours doing my thing. And I was like, well, there you go. All I right. got it accomplished. It's just a matter of doing your priorities right, right? And yeah, just changing right. things up. But but anyway, I'm talking too much about myself. <laughs> you guys run into those kind of issues? I know you guys don't have probably little kids, right? So Yeah, my daughter is 15 and she hardly pays me any attention. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's, it's different. What about you, Alton? So, you uh, but, but, you know, uh, 
you know, me and my wife spend a lot of time together, but she really doesn't have a problem with it as long as I can allocate what I have to do, get it done, then yeah. do what I have to do. You know what I mean? So no, I get it. Alton, what about you? Uh, the way my wife looks at it is it's if there's a lot of worse things I could be doing. And so she doesn't care, you know, I, and okay. I think I, I do work hard as you do at the work life balance thing. And then you fit the hobbies in there. Yeah. But this, for me, this is about emotional health, the connections you make, the creativity you get to explore when you're editing your videos or shooting them. Sure. Incidentally, I hate shooting B roll. That is, <laughs> I just hate it. It's so boring. <laughs> I would, I would rather just talk at the camera and skip all that B-roll, but yeah. Got it. I wish I was random Rob. I would just like, hey guys, here's a watch. I'm not going to edit anything. Click, send, 3,000 views in an hour. Yeah, right. I like that. It's yeah. crazy. But like you, you know, it's, it's, I find it to be a good, at least one full work day to create a, a good, decent video, good watch review. Yeah. yeah. Um, like minimum between just taking shots and B-roll and recording the thing and then three, four hours of editing. People have no idea how much. And, and I'm lucky to do maybe one video a week because, I mean, you think about eight hours a week, that's still a pretty big commitment. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. For sure. Yeah, we, we could tell when people, um, it, it's funny, you know, people hit me up for collaborations and sometimes I, it takes me a little bit just because we got this podcast, right? So yeah. we got to prepare for the podcast. Then the podcast is a little over an hour long. So you're people listening, people watching, you're seeing about an hour. It's not an hour. It's way longer than that. Then I have to edit, well, edit the audio, then edit the video, upload the video. Um, and it's an hour long. So YouTube, it takes about maybe close to three hours to upload. Need to come up with the thumbnail, need to promote on Instagram, and yeah. then need to come up with one video a week. And that's a lot of work, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> so I, I guess that's why um, I'm, I'll, I'm getting to the point where I'm kind of getting burned out, but I, I, I want to keep it as a hobby. I don't know, P. Ross, are you getting burned out? I mean, it's been. Every now and then I get burnt out. I just kind of, just kind of keep it in my mind that this is a passion and this is what I love doing. Got it. So, you know, but every now and then I get burnt out. Got it. I, I feel like you talked a lot about me. <laughs> Let, let's stop that. Let's stop that. Let's That's talk all right, about, buddy. Let's talk about all. You're an interesting me. character. Why wouldn't we talk about you? Am I really? I don't think so. Uh, especially, did you guys see that? Um, I don't remember the gist of it, but somebody left this nasty comment on my uh, <laughs> on my YouTube page no. and basically said that I, I created a new genre of videos of a person. What was it, P. Ross? Something. Um, what did... Oh, it, it was somebody, Miguel, it's interesting. That it was a long message. Was, Miguel created a new genre of videos of somebody that's just winging it. Good for you, Miguel. You don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, all right, well, first wow. of all, I'm not winging it because everything was scripted. Right, I right. don't go off the cuff. So I do my research. But thank you. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Man. It is drama. weird the things people focus on. Like, this one video I didn't try the watch on because it was uh, an AD had brought in like six or seven watches and it was, I think it was on a bracelet. So I couldn't take the plastic off. Someone's going to buy this. They want to take the plastic off. The guy's like, you know, 18 minute video and you don't show the watch on your wrist. I'm <laughs> like, okay. I'm that's sorry. What, yeah. right. <laughs> sorry that this free content isn't meeting your requirements. <laughs> yeah. I know what well, one of the things this, this gentleman mentioned was, that I wasn't, you know, I'm not an expert. And it's like, where yeah. in, in any video, all the videos, all the descriptions, I've never, ever, and will never say I'm an expert. Right, I'm right. Not. I'm, I'm, I have my job I, and I have other things. This is just a hobby. And I'm coming yeah. at it from uh, from my hobby perspective. And am I wrong about things? Yeah, of course. You know, I do. Everybody likes different things. Yes, of course. You know, like this Islander watch. I got mm -hmm. people that don't like it. And that's fine. I, I don't care. Whatever. It's your money. Buy whatever you want to yeah. buy it. I don't really care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, I guess you got to have thick skin. But with that said, what if, if going going back, the first question we were going to ask is what made you start a YouTube channel and Instagram account? But I think you pretty much answered that from us. It was just, yeah. you don't yeah. have any, any I, I just wanted to talk to people about watches and explore that. I enjoyed the Instagram so much and the connections I was making. Yeah. I wanted to give a watch strap away for the Instagram channel. So okay. 
I created the YouTube channel so I could do a little video on that. Oh, cool. And then right. I think it sat until like March before I said, you know, what? I'm going to try a watch review. And it was terrible. I mean, they're still not great, but it was just really Oh, bad. come on, man. Your reviews are great. Hey, for $2.99, I downloaded an app on my phone. I shot all the footage and I put it together on my phone. So if you go back and watch it, you probably go, you know, that's that's okay for a, for a video shot on a phone. Right. <laughs> and edited mm -hmm. on the phone. But, you know, I, I will say this, that the, the benefit has been getting to know a lot of people just just watch enthusiasts, but right. there's almost a fraternity of watch reviewers. Yeah. And I didn't know about it. I just, you know, knew there were some great guys I like to watch and a few, few ladies, there's not too many, unfortunately, but the friendship I've made with watch reviewers has been fantastic. Like they're so encouraging and welcoming and, and Hey, we've got this watch tour. Do you want to join in? And can I get your feedback on this? And yeah, I'm just loving the connections that I'm making with people. Yeah, oh, yeah, I got to agree with you. Yeah, I got to agree with you, right? P. Ross, I mean, right P. Ross and I met because of this watch thing. So right. mm -hmm. we've become really good yes, friends. And, and and you're right, you know, the circle of friends, fraternity, if you will. I never really thought about it that way. We should all get shirts with like a, a right. logo of a fraternity with it. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was watching a live stream with um, Matt Johnson from Beer and Watches and Average Joe yesterday. Right. And, and so this kind of, I think, typifies it. The bunch of watch reviewers got in on that live stream in the comments oh and yeah we're interacting with them now you got four or five different youtube reviewers um and i don't like to call myself that but anyways that's <laughs> that's what we're, we're talking about it and he says we're talking about invicta and he says you know what we should do we should all buy an invicta watch and we'll unbox it on a live stream like this you know <laughs> and we all just kind of unbox the invicta that we bought and then we review it right there live yeah. Oh, God. Uh, and, and I thought that was great. Like, I don't know any of these guys, I've never met them in person, but we had that connection We through the, the yeah. editing and the video stuff and the watches. And so we just kind of have a camaraderie, a family feel about it. No, for sure. It's it's definitely become a, a family, if you will, you know, with a with a bunch of people. And it, it's funny because once you talk outside of watches and get to know people, then that's when you know you're going to have lifelong uh, friendship. Yeah. Even if you don't talk about watches, because watches is kind of like a secondary thing once you become uh, friends with these people, such as yourself, you know, hopefully we can continue to talk. I know we've talked for a while now, but uh, but now that we're, we're talking one on one, hopefully we'll, we'll continue this. You're, yeah. you're an awesome guy and awesome reviewer or whatever you want to call yourself. But <laughs> you oh, yeah, for sure. Really nice personality. And obviously that that shows you are a minister. And that's why. You know, you, you could tell you're you're genuine, and I I personally like that about you, Alton. So. Yes, sir. Yes. For Absolutely. me, for me and everything, it's and I think P. Ross can relate to this because I think you're the same kind of guy. Same with you, Miguel. It's all about just being who you are. Absolutely, being right. authentic in who you are. 100%. If people don't like it, that's okay. Yeah, I don't like everybody right. I meet. They yeah. don't have to like right. me, but just be right. who you are. It's so hard to try to be somebody you're not. Right. You, yeah, you I think I, I think. I've encountered that a lot, like just me being who I am. And some people like, well, we don't like that style of reviewer. We don't like the way you talk. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. No, but but I, I refuse to detract from that. You know what I mean? I can't be nobody but myself. You yeah, I mean? exactly. So, I, I agree. I agree. Well, I got a comment. I So I guess the way I talk or the way I do my videos, I had a guy comment on this on this watch, right? And I, I under he said, what did he say? He said, um, I like the watch, but I don't like the review because it doesn't feel like a review. It feels more like a commercial. But I was like, well, should I be offended or should I should yeah. I be praised because of a commercial? I'm thinking high quality. So thank you, I guess. I don't know. But it's like, I'm not going to change for people like, oh, okay, well, let me do more like the random Rob stuff. Like, it's not the way I do things. So. Yeah. I'm you. just going to do things the way I do it, you know? So. Yeah. And, and I, I don't want to do it the way you do it because I don't have the patience for all of that stuff. Like you put more work into your videos than I think I do. So I like to just talk yeah. and then throw some B-roll on top of it, wrap it up, call it a day. And, right. and I try, I tried that, right? So I tried talking. I just did a video of some straps. Uh, uh, shout out to Riss Hardware, uh, awesome NATO straps. And I, I, I was just trying to do it quick, right? Because I was like, I, I'm so backlogged and I got so many things. So I'll just, I'll just talk without mm. trying to do a script. So I did a script. But a lot of the times in the in the script, I was just kind of like freestyling, I guess, if you will. Oh my god, it went bad. I was like, yeah. <laughs> it, so it um, didn't it didn't go bad because I felt like when I watched it, 
it was like a regular review that you usually do. No, but this is why, okay. P. This is why. So here's the secret. <laughs> I, I just started spitballing things when I was recording my <laughs> audio. And it, within that recording, there was a lot of, so this is a great quality shot because, um, uh, and, and uh, uh, yeah, so the, so what I just did right now, the, uh, uh, I cut yeah. all that stuff out. So it took me even longer doing it that way than when I do my script. When I do my script, I could just yeah. read off my script. But when I do it just like that, just kind of freestyle, I end up messing up so much that I cut out mm. everything from the audio. So you guys didn't hear it in the review because I cut out all my, mm, uh, 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 right. I kept messing right. up. I kept yeah. stumbling. So it took me longer to edit the audio. And that's another thing. I edit my audio as well. Not right, just the right. video, my audio yeah. too. So, um, uh, right. Okay. Yeah, there you go. It's anyway. a lot of work, man. It's a lot of work. Oh, yeah. Hopefully it'll pay off. I don't know. Like, we're, we're close to 2,000 subscribers. So keep it yeah, up, people. It keep will. it up. It my will. growth, that I tell this to P. Ross all the time. I don't think I've ever said it publicly, but my growth equals my friend's growth. And I think vice versa because we all support each other. So yeah. the bigger oh, than yeah. I get and the bigger you guys get, the bigger we're gonna support each other and we're gonna we're gonna climb to the top together, you know? So absolutely. And we are on the road to one thousand subscribers. We are at eight hundred and twelve. Let's get it. Nice. Ross Rich Watch Love, awesome. baby. And by the way, Alton has like you have a lot of subscribers on Instagram, man. You got like three thousand something. Yeah. yeah, closing it on four. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I so, found 4,000 4, people who are committed to my mediocrity. So, That's <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mediocrity. Really. So Alton, <laughs> Alton is going to support us on Instagram, but we'll support him right. on YouTube. Right. There you go. There you go. There it is. That's, there how it is. That's how we do it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. So what do you think of the, the current state of the watch community? Yeah. I, is there something in particular or is that just a no, general? Just, just just a general question because, you know, you have, your haters, you have people that don't like this, people that don't like that. You know what I mean? So just in general. Yeah. Um, I think that I'm kind of sheltered from a lot of the hate because I'm a small channel, big channels. Like you think Jody must get TGV. They must get so many. Oh, just, yeah. <laughs> like it Every would be overwhelming minutes. to read the negative stuff. And I'm the kind of guy I never thumbs down a video unless – unless it's like some weird racist rant or something. Even <laughs> right. then I just, I click on, I just move on. I don't right. thumbs right. it down. Yeah. I don't give it any time. Um, but there's people out there who they just can't wait to hit that thumbs down button or make that negative comment. Yeah. Right. I don't fully understand those people, but I know it's a reality that those people are out there. Correct. And mm -hmm. uh, as a pastor, I mean, you put yourself out there every Sunday, people have honest feedback. Oh yeah. Um, and especially when you're live streaming, but I haven't encountered a lot of that. Um, the subsection of the watch community that I've kind of keyed in with is a lot of the smaller YouTube reviewers, um, just regular watch collectors. Once you start getting up into the high end, high tier stuff, maybe the culture changes. And I do see like one reviewer posted the other day, uh, a, a survey. It was like, should you try Rolex? And, uh, and they had like, no, nah, who cares about Rolex? Yeah. You need to try Rolex at least once in your life. And I, I just wrote in, like, there's no category for we'll never afford a Rolex. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I think, so that's not where I'm at. That's not my circle. And that's okay. They've got their circle. They yeah. do their things. And so, yeah, I mean, I, all I'll say is the people that I've connected with have been amazing. I, I used to be into, I used to, talking about toy collecting, used to be into toys. I've got mm -hmm. oh. cabinets all around me with Star Wars, Transformers. And, I, and cool. back in the day when I was, you know, it was all in the forums, right? I think I've got Stormtrooper right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Mm. Um, this is my off. I'm at the church because we just finished church and I've got Lego Batman. Optimus is over there. Mm. The original <laughs> Star Wars. That's cool. Anyway, those guys are so toxic. Really? Yeah. Like, like the toy people. Oh, yeah. So let's say three yeah, Optimus yeah, Primes be. would be released. Right. And it's like, so, you know, Fans Toys Optimus Prime is so much better than Takara's Optimus Prime. Right, right. And I'm going, holy crap, I just want to take some pictures and, you know, have some fun yeah. with this. But. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I've I've kind of left a more toxic experience. Uh, my experience was toxic there. And this, I found this to be really healthy. But you guys oh, might really? differ. You might have a completely different experience. Um, I, 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 go ahead, you go. 
Well, I was going to say for the most part, everything I, I know I said some negative things about people leaving comments, but throughout my journey has been pretty positive. And yeah. honestly, I've made so many friends and, and it, it feels so good to get props from my peers and also from people mm. that I don't even know who they are. And they're, they're just, you know, commenting on my stuff and, and, and it feels good, you know, cause I mean, at the end of the day, that's what you do things right to, to yeah, get praise. Right. Um, but yeah, as far as the current state of the watch community, I think it's um, okay. How do I say this? To be honest with you, it feels like it's segregated. Um, okay. You have your homage group. You mm-hmm. have your kind of what I consider us kind of like Seiko, you know, anything sub 1500 bucks, maybe 250 mm-hmm. bucks within, within that range. And then you have your expensive guys, right? Mm-hmm. You have your luxury guys. Right. And it's hard for you to really connect with those luxury guys on a different level because to us we we look for value and for them they don't really necessarily care about that they care more about the brand and the prestige and they have that kind of money and then if you want to talk value value you have your homage guys that think we're crazy paying three hundred dollars or a thousand dollars in my yeah. case for a seiko spb and they they just don't get it and they keep and those channels do really really well yeah they do Correct, but but I wonder what their demographic is is like too. And we've had the people, a few people here that that have those channels. And I I, I completely forgot to ask them what your demographic is. Obviously, I'm assuming mostly male, and that's not what what I'm talking about. But I'm talking age demographic because typically I, I'm making an assumption anybody that's probably into the more affordable stuff is either a young because they're getting into watch collecting, or maybe maybe and don't crucify, crucify me for this, but. Uh, maybe they're in third world countries where, or developing countries where mm-hmm. maybe it's really hard to kind of buy a watch. It's either yeah. you eat and pay your rent or you buy a watch, right? right. And, and I completely understand that. And I'm not bashing anybody or, or saying anything, but in my opinion, that's kind of how, how it is. Maybe it's segregated. I might be completely wrong. That's just my personal opinion, but P. Ross. What? I mean, yeah, I, I could see it being segregated like that. Um, but the the watch community as a whole, I think, is in a good space. You know what I mean? Because you have so so many good people out there. Yeah. Well, it's, you know it's I mean? definitely so, growing. I mean, they're trying to yeah. watch this. Definitely growing. Right. So. Yeah. For sure. And th- some of the people are just great. And you know what? In anything, you can't find a hundred percent greatness in it. It's always going to be some negative. So, yeah. but I think for me, the positive has outweighed the negative. So I agree. You know. I think for me, it's about finding that circle of people who are kind of like-minded yeah, and, right, and enjoying, yeah. enjoying that community, giving to those people in that community and letting the rest kind of fall away and right. let the rest do what they want to do. That's cool. I mean, you, it's, it's about respect too, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't know about y'all, but there has been several people that, that post watches on Instagram that I may not necessarily like, mm-hmm. but because I respect that person, I'll show them love because, yeah. you know what I mean? So... You know, and yeah. I think that's the way it should be regardless. Yeah, absolutely. Well, for me, I mean, obviously, it's no secret that I don't cite with homage watches personally, but I always like the pictures on Instagram and yeah. like their videos and always leave a positive comment right. and not necessarily like great watch. I just say great review. Keep it up. Just motivation. Mm-hmm. Right. Because right. I, I, I expect yeah. not expect the same from them. No, no, that's the wrong word. But I would like people to do the same for me look if you don't like the watch that i'm reviewing that's fine but Mm -hmm. at least look at the work that i'm putting out you know you don't have to like the 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 watch for instagram same thing right i mean uh, you you go out of your way to take a picture and if somebody sees you taking a picture of a watch you look a little silly so why do you do it Mm -hmm. you do it because for the gram right Mm -hmm. or (laughs) for the the gram for the gram for the gram for the book for the book so I got a question, guys, before we move on. And, and obviously people watching this on, on YouTube or it probably came from Instagram. We had a picture of the Neo Mega Speedmaster. So I don't want people to be like, well, that was clickbait. They didn't even talk about the Speedmaster. So I want to, <laughs> before we move on with all the other questions, the new Speedmaster just dropped. They changed a few things. I mean, honestly, to the naked eye, it looks the same. <laughs> right. But to us watch people we 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 know who wants to go first. Do you guys have any opinions on the on the new Speedmaster? All I'll say about it is this. All my life I've been waiting, waiting for them to put that dot 
over the 90. That's that's all I've been waiting for. My life is complete now. This guy. <laughs> I, I like it. I like it. It's you can't mess with that formula too much. It's a speed master. It needs to remain a speed master. So they kind of tweak the dial, have some raised and lowered areas on it. They right. move the dot over the 90. Um, there's a new movement, which I think that's probably the most unseen but biggest impact on the Speedmaster. And yeah. from what, what I can is, tell, what is the moment? What is that? Moment? 3861. So it's 30 a master, yeah, master chronographer, meta certified, uh, 50 okay. hour hard reserve, which I'm not. 50 hours. I don't know if they could have messed with that, but yeah, man, uh, it took them a long time to to get to that movement, which other watches have, you know, great movement, the coaxial mm-hmm. movements. I don't know why it took them so long, but they they have a plan, you know, but honestly, if, if we compare a Omega Speedmaster to a Rolex Daytona, I would take the Speedmaster all day, every day because oh, of yeah, the, absolutely. Because of the heritage and also yeah. they're available and also they're not overpriced, right. in my yeah. opinion. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're going to be able to find some uh, for a better deal. The old gen as the new gen comes out. So maybe this is the time to jump on that. Maybe if you want to commit the money. Yeah. Obviously mm. the, I think, well, I don't think I know they went up in price, right? So the Hess light is like in the six thousands and then mm-hmm. the Sapphire sandwich, which they call, what, do they still call it a sandwich? I don't know, but the Sapphire, <laughs> um, that one is like seven, like 7,000. Mm. And that one is the only one that does have the applied, uh, Omega logo on the at the twelve mm. o'clock. They both have new bracelets. I, I like them. They, it's kind of like a throwback to the old school stuff. It reminds me of my nineteen ninety Speedmaster. Would I pick I th- one up? I would, but <laughs> I would hey, definitely pick if you one had up. Seven too. to eight grand, sure. Why not? Yeah. Oh yeah. And you know it, that it, to, to me, that's ten to thirteen grand, right? Canadian. Oh we yeah, that's right, a lot of money. Right. Man. So P Ross, yeah. what do you, what do you, it, how do you feel it, about? It, there's not too much Omega can do to really piss me off. You know what I'm saying? I think it looks great. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? I love the bracelet. The movement. What is the movement again? Let me. The 3861. 3861. Okay. Manual wine movement. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, can't beat it, man. Omega is the she is knit. Period. I agree. I mean, everything from their presentation to yeah. everything they do. I, I love Omega. And it's, I, I've, again, I don't think I publicly said this before, but I think, in my opinion, I prefer Omega over Rolex. Honestly. I do. I do. Honestly. I do. I prefer Omega over Alton. Rolex. How about you? <laughs> Absolutely. That's just like last year. Alton when they, doesn't want to say anything. He's like, nope. That's just like last year when they did the, uh, what was it? The three, two, one. Yeah. The bomb. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. yo, and, and I went on record last year saying that that could be watch of the year. And y'all was like, nah, it's too early to do that. But, you know, it is what it is. It's, whew. Alton. Uh, this is not my area of expertise, but I think if I were to look at the portfolios and I compared Rolex versus Omega, there'd be more to offer on Omega and definitely a better value oh, yeah. there. I mean, there's some classic pieces of Rolex Explorer is classic and it's absolutely hard to, hard to compete with that. Right. But if you look at the whole breadth of the, the portfolio Omega, I mean, the rail master is not one that people love, but I love. Oh, I love the rail. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding yeah. Me? Mm-hmm. It doesn't get the play that a lot of other watches do, right. but it's a fantastic piece. Mm-hmm. You know what I like about Omega? I mean, aside from all the things that I like about Omega, but uh, you could get them, right? And if you yeah. go into the vintage market, they're affordable. Like a normal person like us could afford an, a vintage Omega. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. C- good luck trying to find a vintage Rolex. You can't. Right, you can't. right. It's so much no. money. And, and it, it's, it's, it's not the quality built. It's the name. That's mm-hmm. all it is. And that's right. what's kind of like frustrating, right? It's like to non watch people, Rolex is the king. And it's like, no, it's all marketing. Like it's a mm-hmm. great watch, but it's not the end all be all type of watch, you know? So mm-hmm. for me, I don't know if I could wear a Rolex because I'd really have a hard time going down to our soup kitchen and handing out sandwiches with a Rolex on my wrist. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And I mean, I work hard for my money. I am thrifty. I put it away and that's how I afford watches. But then there's kind of like that. I could have a really nice Omega. People have no idea how much it costs. Right. But they see a Rolex. That's alienating to a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you ever think of that kind of stuff. Of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All the time. Yeah, because people you know? just just look at the logo, right? So they don't they don't automatically assume it's expensive, right? Right. And, and it makes you a target. Yeah. You know, so. 
I think the biggest change that people are going to notice with the new Speedmaster is the bracelet by yeah. far. Yeah. yeah. Because right. now I've never worn one, but I know that the old bracelet was uh, about 54 millimeters, the kit, the lug to lug. And then you had the bracelet. It, it was quite wide, whereas the new one is under 50. So mm. smaller wristed guys are going to be able to wear this more easily. Not, not a problem. I experience with an eight inch wrist, but I know most people aren't as beefy as that. Yeah, right. I, I would love to try one on, even if obviously I don't have the money to buy one, but I would just love to try one on. Sir, now, do you have a favorite homage watch and what do you honestly think about them? And another part to this question is, what do you think about the Islander watch? Okay, there's a lot to cover there. Yeah, I have one homage watch. It is a Courget Flieger watch. Oh, uh, sixty U.S. dollars, sapphire crystal. Is, is it the is it the Type A Flieger? Type A. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. I was so surprised when I got it how nice it was. I was expecting it to be garbage for sixty U.S. dollars. The movement is garbage in it. <laughs> it stopped working <laughs> after a while. Oh, really? Um, but then I, yeah. So I pulled the crown out, and then it would just kind of stutter, and then I couldn't get it to start nice. again. I'd have to bang. Hey, that looks like it. Yes, sir. Do you have the Miyota in it or the Chinese movement? The Miyota. Yeah. See, yeah, I, the Miyota. I think I watched one of Jody's videos uh, and and he recommended it, but they had different versions and you, I think it was either lottery, luck of the draw, which movement right. you got. Anyway, so I, I pulled the crown out and, and it wouldn't start and I'd bang it around then it would start and it was keeping like 10 seconds a day, which wasn't too bad, mm. but then uh, one day I was taking a picture of it on the front porch and I had it up here. I think I was like hanging it off a light or something. You know how we do, right? right. For the craft. And I dropped it onto concrete. Ooh, ouch. And, and I talk about this in my latest video, looking at, at an Islander. And it's a little scuff here, but then all of a sudden the movement started working again. So mm. now it, it still hacks, <laughs> hand winds, does all that stuff. It didn't, it didn't chip, it didn't crack. It just scratched the... Yeah. So, you know, I've got, I've got respect for that Courget Flieger type A. Uh, it's the only one I have. I'm not really into them. I kind of think like, okay, maybe it'd be fun to spend 120 bucks and, and have that Railmaster Parnas, I think it is. And of course, they all make one of them. I'm not a big Rolex diver guy, so having a Rolex homage on my, watt, on my wrist isn't something I'm into. Because I, I do know I'm going to see some businessman or something and he's going to go oh that's it's a nice rolex i'm going actually you know <laughs> it's not right uh, yeah but the reason i do like the uh, the fleegers is that well they're they're unbranded and right, true there was a dozen companies that made them so it's it's not like an homage of the rolex Submariner where just you know this is it this is the watch they're they're homaging something that's been homaged 12 times over throughout history and then every other company so um that's why i picked up two islander aviators because maybe they're considered homage watches i don't know but uh, i picked up one and then i picked up another a couple months later and i really really like them mm. um, i found i mean 199 dollars sapphire crystal ar coating bulletproof movement I, I i've said many times that an h35 isn't my favorite movement but both of them are running within five seconds a day. So like, I don't know what else I can ask from these watches. They look good. They're, you know, if well, I were so. to branch, I've been watching a lot of uh, this guy called The Watcher and uh, there's a couple other affordable channels and they've been doing a lot of steel dive, um, like Seiko homages, ironically mm -hmm. enough. Tunas and like, I just don't know if I want to commit six or 700 Canadian to a, a Seiko tuna, especially considering mm. all the issues that Seiko's had with alignments and other stuff lately. I mean, well, maybe always. So uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm more of a, I'd rather spend maybe a little bit more money, get something a little more worthwhile. That's going to, I shouldn't say worthwhile. That'll alienate people like, I guess I want to say, do I want this watch in my collection for the next 10 years? If not, I probably don't want to buy it. I guess that's the way I look at it. Mm, Makes sense. Interesting. 
Makes sense. Well, I see that uh, you own an Alpina, right? I don't know if one or two, but uh, I've never checked one out in the metal. Do you recommend them? What do you think about them? Absolutely. The quality is absolutely fantastic on this. Um, I would recommend buying in the used market because they're not so popular. People buy them, they flip them, but they're not making a profit. They're selling at a loss for the most part. Mm. So, or, or go gray market on that. But uh, yeah, I have the new Star Timer 40 millimeter. I tried the 44 on a couple of years ago at a Macy's and I love the dial. I love the case finishing, all of that stuff, but it was just too big. And, and this is from a, a bigger wristed guy. So I thought when I saw the 40 millimeter, I'd already talked to the AD at Halifax watch and he was kind of on the lookout for that. He hit me up and said, Hey, it's coming in. Do you want it? And I'm like, yes, I do. So Ooh. what movements do they use? It's a, it's a SW, uh, they, they modify Salida movements. It's, it's not the highest move rated movement in them. Entry level Swiss, uh, movements. Got it. yeah. Mm. But there, are they sub $1,000 around there? You know, I have to always remember because I have to translate from Canadian down to us dollars. So I paid 1200 for it Canadian. So that would be around 800 us. Okay. I would say maybe seven, seven fifty, and, and, and I paid like full retail because there was only five in Canada. Mm. One, one authorized dealer was getting them and he only had five. And he said, I don't know if I'm getting more in the new year. I wanted that colorway. So I said, you know what, I'll pay this for that. And it was just something I was willing to do. Very cool. Cool. But with that said, you know, 2021 is here. Do you have any watches you're picking up in 2021? And also it's a twofold question. So what's, what's your goal for 2021 as far as watches and what's your goal for your Instagram and your YouTube account for 2021? Do you have any? Yeah. So I'd really like to hit that thousand subscriber mark. That's the monetization. Mark. Great goal. Absolutely. Not because I'm going to make any money when I hit it and monetize <laughs> as you guys no, it's, it's not lucrative for those of us playing in the shallow end of the pool, but um, it's just a goal that you set and it's kind of like a validation. And honestly, whenever a watch company says, hey, would you like to review our watch? And usually they approach me. I don't usually go after them. I'm always like, really? You want me to review your watch? Um, but I feel like when you get to that mark, you have a more of a validity and they're going to be more comfortable sending stuff in. And I just mm -hmm. want to check out cool watches really. Like that's most of the reason I started the channel. Okay. Send me your watches. I want to see them. I want to pass them on the next guy to check out and enjoy. And so uh, if I can monetize and get to that level, then I know companies will go, okay, he's a little more legit. Well, you know, absolutely. I, I'm always amazed when a company like Vario sends me a watch. I'm like, what for my 300 views? <laughs> are, right. you, are you really getting your money's worth here on the postage? <laughs> yeah, I've, it's so they funny. Send I've, it. I've reached out to Vario before and they've just ignored me. <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> but hey, oh. whatever, man. I, I've worked with so many. Oh. This is this is really cool right here. I mean, just just a testament that Mark. Um, I know. How did you? Willing. Did he reach out to you? Did you bug him? So, did you stalk his house? What did you no. do? No. So here's the here's the funny thing he follows me on Instagram and he told me, he's like, I don't follow many Instagram accounts, but I really like you. And I like the content that you're putting out. So, and that was yeah. months ago. So I was like, Oh, okay, cool, man. I, I really, it goes a long way. I've been a fan for such a long time. Thank you. Appreciate that. And how did it come about this? So I made a comment on one of our podcasts about the Islander watch. Cause something we we're talking about homage and, um, and then they, the 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 guest we had on put me on the spot and said, "Well, how do you feel about the Islander watch? Do you do they get a pass from you?" And it put me in a really compromising position because I know Mark at that point, right? And I'm like, "Well, ye, I wouldn't own one because of that." But the upside is the customer service, the quality build. Like it's not a Chinese watch. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. technically, I guess it is, but you know what they I mean? Are. It's it's different. It's different. But um, anyway, I I put that out there and then people started responding in the comment section. Same thing. Well, again, tell us why does Mark get a pass? So I had to elaborate, but anyway, what I did, I took a shot of that and I sent it to Mark directly. I said, Hey man, I want you to hear it from me, not from anybody else. I'm not trying to bash your brand at all. You know, I just don't like homage watches, but 
And this is what I said about you and your brand, you know, and I guess he liked it. He was like, Hey, thank you. I, I, I respect that. And then I said, Hey, as a matter of fact, if you ever want to send a watch in for review, like I'll, uh, let me borrow one and, and I'll do a review of it, honest review and, and let me know. He took, you know, a few hours to get back to me. And then he's like, how about this? He's like, I got a new watch coming out that nobody has reviewed yet. And I want to give you the opportunity to review it. That way you could be the That's first awesome. one. How do you feel about that? I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> so he sent it in, you know, so that's how it happened. And, and we've been in touch ever since. And he liked yeah. the review, gave me a shout out on Instagram. And yeah, man, he, awesome guy, you know, awesome yeah, guy. Yeah, so. seriously good dude. So he started making all these parts for SKXs. Yeah. And then within six months, it's like, oh, you're watch your way, but they're discontinuing the SKX. <laughs> I know. But, He's a seriously smart guy. And he said, you know, I've got all of these parts lined up. Why don't, why don't I give the people what they want? They want these modded SKXs right. with the NH35 or, you know. Sapphire, this, ceramic. Whatever. They want all that mm -hmm. stuff. And he's given it to them. He's not pretending that it's a Seiko. I have no moral issue with that whatsoever. Yeah. And I, I would have no problem wearing one. I, I'm not a huge, I have an SKX. I love it. I love it for its place in history. I'm not a big fan of the shape, shape of the case. What? Um, Come on, man. I know. I, I love it, that. It looks, it's like this bulbous gelatinous mass that just kind of, it's all curves and I like sharp <laughs> and crisp and clean. That's me. That's all. Now I got it. Okay. That's cool. You know, so I don't have any of Mark's, but if I, if uh, SKX homages, but if, if that's the way I want to go, I would definitely spend $2.99 on one of those because um, in my last video on the aviators that I had, I had two black aviators. And the reason is one of them, and I didn't discover it until I'd worn it for a day or two, had a, a crescent shaped piece of paint yeah. under the dial. I saw that. My wife emailed Mark Christmas Day at like 7 p.m. She heard back from him an hour later. Yeah. Christmas night. Five days later, it crossed the border into Canada, it was at my doorstep. Like, unbelievable customer service i've never had an experience like that yep i, I haven't even sent that. the other one back yet it's sitting on my mantle in an envelope ready to go and i keep going i gotta mail that thing back like amazing mm -hmm. i could attest to that I, i've been uh so he's better with the email and I, i've emailed him like at night like late my my time in california and he gets back to me and i'm like does this guy like not sleep or something like what the Dude heck needs to turn his phone yeah. off like that's gonna drive him crazy one day <laughs> And, know, and my man. wife even said in the reply on Christmas night, like, hey, it's eight o'clock, Christmas night, December 25th. Maybe you can reply to this in the morning. Don't reply again tonight. <laughs> yeah, don't. Just just take it easy, man. Just take it easy. But but so goals for 2021 as far as watches? You want to pick I anything up? I have the same goal as last year. I want a German watch. The No most. Uh, but I did not reach that goal last year because I kept getting tempted by some sweet, sweet Seikos and Swiss watches. Uh, I picked up three Swiss watches last year and, and a really nice Belova. So this year, Young Hans is the way I'm going. Max I, mean, I think. I don't know because they have the 38 millimeter case mm -hmm. and it kind of looks like I'm wearing a quarter on my wrist to me. Mm when when i do that 40 is kind of a nice spot for me so i know the the chronoscope is 40. right so we'll see it'll come down to budgeting and you know I have a few other things i want to do a buddy of mine is looking at becoming an ad for that so Ooh, i'm like nice. hey you know now i don't ask deep discounts though from my friends because it's their business they gotta right, make their money course. but you know sometimes it doesn't yeah. hurt to maybe be first in line for something when it comes in Right. I agree. How big is your wrist anyway? You keep talking about your wrist being huge. <laughs> oh, it's not huge. It's not huge. It's only eight. It's only eight inches, but um, it's I mean, twenty centimeters. You're what seven? Seven what? P Ross? Seven, seven and a half. Seven and a quarter. Seven and a quarter. Yeah. I'm six and seven eight. So yeah, my my wrist is a little little weenie, little weenie weenie. Yeah. <laughs> but cool, cool goals, man. I, we we all got to have them. So awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and for those, let me deviate a little bit. For those of you that haven't seen um, the collaboration between my friend P. Ross and David Schwartz, go check it out. I noticed something about P. Ross. So on the podcast, I talk what? too much and I just need to, I need to just be quiet. I need to just shut my mouth. But 
on that um, collaboration they did, it was like an hour long. P. Ross was talking a lot. I was like, that's not the P. Ross that I know on the, <laughs> on the podcast. Maybe we're. Really? Yeah. Really? You, you were talking serious? A, yeah, you were talking a lot. And I'm like, I wish you would talk like that on no, the podcast. But I talk all the time. I don't. I don't get that. No, you were talking a lot on that on that no. video, and it was it's my fault. I talked too much. I'm sorry. I get it from my I, mom. <laughs> I've watched some of your podcasts, and P. Ross is more like the color commentary. You'll you'll kind of say something, and then you'll come in with, "Yeah, right," and you'll add his little tidbit to it. It, it works. Yeah, you have a, 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 a little flavor. You know. Yeah, what I'm exactly. No? Bring the spice. You know what I'm saying? You like Kool Aid. I'm like the sugar. Yeah, you know what I mean? Go. Great and analogy. you need the sugar. Kool-Aid no. without sugar is bad. <laughs> right. Right. I went exactly. on a camping trip in high school. My friend and I said, we're going to bring all this Kool-Aid powder. <laughs> we had no idea that it wasn't sweetened. So oh, God. We're in the woods for five days, and we're drinking this Kool-Aid, and it's terrible. So you need Ooh, the sugar. Need you need P. Ross. Yeah. I'm not. We need P. Ross. We absolutely need P. <laughs> Ross. But we we just need you to sprinkle more sugar in there, P. Ross. Right, and I, okay. I okay. need to have less Kool Aid. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh wow. man. Boy, this is gonna be a great clip to put on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, for, for, for sure, for sure. So I think I think my other goal is I need to kind of pare down the collection a little bit, decide what's staying, what maybe I can sell. I have a hard time getting motivated to sell because it's such a hassle and I hate losing I, I, money. But I've done a lot of that in 2020, selling a lot, a lot of pieces. So, yeah, I know Pete Ross, you got rid of uh, some Invictus, right? I mean, yeah, you, you were Invicta few. heavy and you got rid of a lot of uh, a lot of Invictus. I got rid of a lot of the fashion watches I had, watches, Michael right. Kors and stuff like that. So, but yeah. the cool thing is you're reinvesting you know? the money into yeah. like. Yeah different pieces and stuff like that so yes sir yeah how do you feel about micro brand watches uh alton i've reviewed a number of micro brands i love working with micro brands because for the most part you're dealing with just one or two people and it's a passion project i don't know any micro brands that i've like i haven't worked with any micro brands where this was just a cash cow for them because i don't think there's a lot of money in that till you get established uh like my my, my friends over at york and front um just so much passion for the watch that they've got. Uh, Zanea watches did, did that and just really get to know the owners of it. Same with the straps too. Like, um, well, you you're working with straps co and I'm yet to make a video, but I've been working with them a little bit, just getting to know people like that. Um, yeah, I, I, I love micro brand watches. They don't always have the best value. Sometimes they offer more value. So you have to be smart in your shopping, do your research. And to just kind of know what you're getting into. Oh, yeah. One thing I really notice about micro brand watches, they take a lot of time to give you more versus the big boys. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like packaging, you know, uh, materials and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, well, uh, uh, I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, you don't see a lot of micro brand watches is cashing in, if, if you will. It's right. mostly, well, let me take that back. I guess, I guess it depends what the micro brand is. So micro brand watch is because I've seen it all. I mean, I, I've, I've seen, obviously I'm not going to name any names, but I've seen brands. Let's just call it from overseas that just want to make money. And you could tell that that's all they're in for, but you can tell which people are real watch enthusiasts and, you know, notice, I mean, I can mm -hmm. speak to them because I, I, personally friends with Wes mm. with one of the owners okay. and believe me Love we've had, great stuff we've had conversations um and I, I could I could tell his passion you know aside from watches I could tell that he's a real genuine guy that cares mm. about the community you know so they they really do pay attention to well, what is the community like what do they need to, like Mark right mm -hmm. from Long Island Watch but obviously they make their own creations um not just an homage watch so to me personally, I think micro brands uh, bring a lot of a lot of value a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. Not every time, but mm -hmm. just like any other brand, like big brand, they started somewhere, right? Hundreds right. of years ago, granted, but mm -hmm. they started somewhere. And if they keep at it, I guarantee that those Montas, those Notas, those you know uh, other brands, Brews watches, mm -hmm. the first gens are gonna be worth money mm -hmm. later on down oh, the road yeah. because they started the whole thing for them, you know. My opinion, my two sons might be wrong. <laughs> Absolutely. P. Ross, sprinkle some sugar. Some sugar? Come on, P. Ross. 
There it is. There it is. That's yeah. the thing now. Sprinkle the sugar. Yeah. Every, every time you gotcha. see me do this, mm-hmm. that means P. Ross, talk more. Sprinkle, 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 more. sprinkle a little more. Sprinkle sure. a little more. <laughs> yeah. No, P. Ross. Yeah, been... but it, it, it's, it's it's incredible value in, uh, uh, oh, I lost my train of thought. Lord well, have mercy. Well, you recently <laughs> but, reviewed the Zanea watch. You the Zanea, Zanea, and uh, and the uh, album diver, the album yeah. watch, the album yeah. diver. Oh, great watch, I, great I watch. I want to see that watch. That watch, great watch, wicked. The case, the great dial. watch, yeah, Love that. Yes, great watch. I like things that are quirky too. I yeah. get kind of and, bored with another Rolex uh, homage, just kind of, yeah, yeah. It's a great watch, man. You know, Woo. so if you had to, if God forbid. Your house was on fire, and you had to pick one watch. Oh, what would God. you pick? What would you pick? Mm. Both of you guys, tell me. I I know P. Ross. We talked about this last last week, but did you change your mind? No. Okay. So what Alton, would you say? Certina. Certina. And for me, it was the Bulobo, okay. the one that my dad gave me. So I just we just yeah. had this discussion last week. But Alton, what would you what would you pick? There's a few at the top of the list, but I think the one I'm wearing, the Hamilton Navy Pioneer, because it was my first Swiss, Swiss watch. And uh, Does like that my, have a small second hand on it? No, this okay. is the bigger one with uh, it's 43 millimeters. Okay, the cool. other one's a 40 with sub right. second. I kind of okay. wish now that I'd gone 40, the 40 mm-hmm. millimeter with the sub seconds, but this was my first Swiss watch. It was a big deal for me. It was a $600 purchase. That was a big deal for me. It's a lot of money. Yeah. Mm. I had saved up most of the money and then my wife's car broke down and I she's like, where are we going to get the money? I'm like, here, <laughs> take oh, the money. Yeah. Man. And, and, you know, and then I was able to sell a few pieces and, you know, you squirrel away some money and buy it. So it was a big accomplishment for me. Mm-hmm. And I love the watch. It's a great watch. So it's a hundred oh, meters yeah. water resistant. Looks good. I can wear it to church. I can wear it with t-shirt. Yeah. No, yeah, it's nice. I have a question. I don't know if you're open to talking about this, but we've had some ministers in the past on the podcast. And one of the topics we talked about is, you know, material things, because obviously the church teaches you not to, you know, get attached Mm -hmm. to material things, obviously. So are you open about your watch collecting with anybody in the church or do you try to keep it separate? Oh, it's a dirty little secret. I don't tell anybody. (laughs) <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't talk about it a lot because I like to talk about things people can relate to. And most of them don't talk about, don't relate to watches. Uh, but I have mentioned it a few times in my sermons. Uh, I preached today, actually, a uh, passage where Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So it's kind of like the, what you value shapes what you do. And I was talking about how, you know, what 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 do we value? Is it Is it the choir robes? Is it the church building? Or do we value broken people who need healing through God, right? Um, So I think the same comes to watches. Where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. So I'm pursuing watches because I love them, but it's secondary to everything else. They have to be. If 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 I really needed to, I could sell them all, walk away. I'd be 100% fine with that because it's, it's, it's a passion I enjoy, but it's secondary to a lot of other more important things like family, God, that kind of stuff. Right on. Yeah. Right I on. To, I used to hear that from my dad all the time. So, oh, there you go. No, my, my dad, obviously, <laughs> Alton, I told you that he's heavily involved in church. And I know when I used to live with them back in my, in my 20s, I was really into cars, right? So modifying them, buying them, selling them, all kinds yep. of stuff. And he used to, he used to get on me all the time. He was like, you know what? I'm starting to see that your God is your car and Mm. that should never be the case. Always keep your priorities straight. And I, you know, it it bothered me every single time because I was like, man, I'm just doing my thing. That's not true. Obviously I, I I see God as, you know, my number one, but I, I think I honestly was probably lying to myself and the same could be said for anything. Right. So your watches could become your God, your whatever it is, uh, video games or electronics, anything could become your God. So yeah, just keep your priorities straight. You know, there's other yeah. things more important than these little things that don't really mean anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's funny. We're talking, we have a po- literally a podcast about watches and we're saying mm-hmm. they're not that important, but they really yeah, are. Yeah, it's true. Really if, are. if you know who you are, like really deep down, know who you are and you're comfortable with who you are. If you feel loved and accepted, then 
a passion like this you could walk away from because you don't really need it. But there's a lot of people who are very broken, who don't have a, a loving home life, don't yeah. have acceptance, don't True feel that. fulfilled. Maybe they've been abused in the past. They don't know who they are except as a victim. Uh, and these are the kinds of people I work with all the time. And so for them, they try to fill that hole with cars, watches, what your Instagram and, and page, whatever it think, is. Do you think that's where the snobbery comes in because of stuff like that? Absolutely. 100%. As soon as you have an us versus them kind of situation, you're talking to somebody who's very insecure. And, they, and the, the challenge is they might look like they're so secure because they're very opinionated. But most opinionated people are, in my experience, very insecure people who just need you to agree with them so that they can be validated. Wow. Right on. Thank you. So crazy. This is probably not where you're supposed to be going with this podcast. No, the, you know, one of, one of the... One of the you comments. know what? That can be a thing, man. Sprinkle. 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 That could be a thing, man. That's it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> one, of, one of the comments that we keep getting, Alton, uh, from people is they, they, they really do say that they like how deep we go with our guests because a lot of, like, we're not going to hate on any podcast, but a lot of podcasts out there really are superficial and they just focus on the the watches and they just talk so much about the watches. But to me, it's not about the watches. It's about yeah. the people and it's about yeah. the feelings and about the emotions and about exactly what you just touched on, right? Mm -hmm. So anybody listening to this, anybody watching on YouTube, this is not about these things. It's about us. It's about the community. So right. before you put a hate message, before you put any hate into the world, really think about that. If you're broken, if something happened to you, we're sorry for you. Mm -hmm. Right. And when you mm -hmm. feel bad, but you don't need to spread that negativity to everybody else. We all mm -hmm. have our issues that we're dealing yeah. with. You just spread the love, you know, and yeah. you hit something really funny. You said us versus them. The brand of this shirt that I'm wearing is us versus them. And you can see anybody watching, it mm. says never surrender, right? Mm. Never surrender. So it can have many different meanings, you know, just never surrender in life. Never surrender with your collecting. I don't know. If we want to get philosophical here, we can, right, P? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, do, no man. doubt, no doubt, no doubt. That's what we yeah. do. We go deep. We yes, go sir. deep, Alton. We go deep. go deep. You know what I'm saying? See, and, 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 and just remember this. The man that sleeps on the floor can't fall out of bed. <laughs> there you go. All right. All right. <laughs> Is that a proverb? Because it sounds like one. Hey, I, I got a book of proverbs of my own. It ain't going to be worth nothing, but you know, <laughs> I write things down every now and then. So, so you've had Dave on the show, and he's a pastor in Japan. Who else have you had? Uh, Josh. Yeah. yeah. Josh. Yeah. Who else has been? Uh, who else? Has uh, been I think I that's, think that's it. it. Yeah. Okay. As far as ministers, yeah, but sure. yeah, every... there's a lot of us for some reason. I, I mean, there's a, a number of us who are either um, like really heavily involved in church or pastors that are also watch reviewers. I don't. I have no idea why. If we keep wondering the same thing, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but you know in my job i do a lot of videos like when i walk up to the stage i create like a 60 second video to introduce the topic of the day so oh, i've been doing cool. videos for years uh, live streaming all that kind of stuff is i do it for work i do it for play actually i've learned i've gotten better at my job because i do these watch videos so i learn how to be better at editing at shooting right. and that kind of stuff that's cool so maybe yeah. that's a thing i have no idea i don't know all right, Alton. Well, we're getting to the part of the show where we talk about other things. And I, I think last week, P. Ross, I think we didn't even get a chance to talk about other things because no, we kind of we went over. Yeah. So, yeah. so Alton, take it away. You could talk about whatever you want. Floor is yours. Well, hey, I'm just so glad you guys had me on. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, thank you. Yeah. The one thing I do want to talk about is I'm really excited. I got a message from Dave at Just The Watch. And uh, he's working with Shane at Relative Time. Yep. And great guy. show it to those guys. Love those guys. Uh, I've been following Relative Time since I think maybe his fifth or sixth video for a while now. Wow. And yeah. so they kind of hit me up and said, hey, we're going to start a watch game show. Are you in? Mm -hmm. I said, well, tell me about it. And so the idea is that there's going to be the three of us as hosts. We'll bring That's on a cool. fourth person. They're going to show us their collection and we're going to have to answer questions about <laughs> their collection. So I guess in Japan, the, the contestants are actually celebrity hosts a lot of the time. Oh. And, and I, like, I, I've never watched a Japanese game show, but uh, Dave explained that 
I kind of think it's kind of like top, top gear, but with watches. Okay. Um, you know, when they do that interview anyway. So at the end, one of the three of us will be crowned the winner. I don't know what the reward <laughs> is, or perhaps it will be a negative reward for the two losers. Maybe they have to post, <laughs> I don't know, an homage watch on their Instagram or something. But, <laughs> um, yeah. So we're, we're going to do uh, it's called uh, collection conundrum. It starts on Sunday. At around, I think seven thirty, but you'll you'll hear more about that as okay, we confirm cool. those details. Is it going to be live or recorded? Or it's going to be live, so you can interact mm. with us, and we will be looking for people to bring their collections in. I'm going to be the first guest on the first one, which cool. is probably good because people don't know who I am. How this guy? <laughs> who's this guy? And they've asked me to present my five watch collections, so I got to pick five out of my. 20 or so watches and oh that's tough right. yeah. Mm. yeah so it should be a lot of fun well keep us posted i would love to be a host i mean and not oh, a, host, yeah. a, a I, guest yes <laughs> yeah i thought of you i thought of you and and p ross if you bring the sugar you can definitely be a guest <laughs> oh p ross what you got oh uh, i ain't got nothing since the mandalorian went off tv no i'm just oh, playing yeah. um <laughs> you know i ain't got no but no i just got a brand new knife nice uh-huh. New Spider Co. Very cool. You know what I mean? nice. Watches and knives <laughs> seem to go together. I don't have any. That's cool. You need one, Alton. About- you need to defend yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, you, Other than that- if you knew where I lived in the small town in Ontario, you'd know the only thing I have to defend against is wild beavers. <laughs> hey, you need there you go. They could be yeah. very wild. <laughs> they can be dangerous. They've got teeth, man. <laughs> those rabid canadian beavers oh wow so let me let me grab something here and, and unfortunately people listening obviously you're not going to see what i'm going to show you but on one of our shows for christmas we had our our, our friend fred from shaluso and we recommended things for christmas right um mm-hmm. one of the things that i recommended was um some artwork and crazy enough it was from at ink dial so I, mm-hmm. I uh, reached out to the guy and said, hey, man, we gave you a shout out on, on the podcast. Just want to let you know, I, I see that you're growing. You have some amazing artwork. Very cool. Send me a message. He's like, I appreciate the shout out. I want to send you a little something. So he sent me for my, for my wall, oh, wow. Speedmaster nice. the front and the back nice. of the Speedmaster. So I'm going oh, wow. nice. to frame these things. Speedmaster nice. professional drawn by him with a signature. Wow. So good. Nice. Personalized note, you know, inked out nice. saying thank you for the shout out. I'm going to send yeah. you something. So thank you so much. Nice. Thank you so much, Ink Dial. Appreciate that. In Absolutely. that vein, I'd like to send a shout out to Rolex. Uh, <laughs> maybe in a, something Batman y. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Hey, Ross, who do you want to? <laughs> hey. Omega. Uh, Philippe, uh, Omega. Patek. <laughs> uh, Filippo Loretti. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dream big, P. Ross. Come on. <laughs> uh, oh man, that that's been yeah. that, that's funny. That's funny. So, Alton, where can people find you, man? Yeah, find me at uh, at Half Past Blog on Instagram and Half Past Blog on YouTube, and okay. uh, or just Google subpar watch videos, and you'll find me all over. Right on. Right on. <laughs> Stop it, man. <laughs> P. Ross. Ross Wrist Watch Love everywhere. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. And yeah, also, I'm just I'm just connecting uh, with you. We weren't even Instagram friends until like a month ago. Yeah. What? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how. Yes, sir. But Alton also and I, we've we go. Oh back yeah, you and I have been friends, but P. Ross right. and I just connected. We like just connected ago. Mm-hmm. All right. Yep. Sorry, P. Ross, you were saying. But also check out Facebook for the SoCal Watch Review Podcast Facebook page. Ah, you know what I'm we saying? need to grow that. I for whatever you reason we saying? just no no traction there. What's going on? Right. And just I'm, to I'm make working it, on it. And just to make it clear, we are we are getting new 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 followers, new people listening to podcasts. Thank you so much. And everybody, when when I uh, comment on something or whatever, they always say. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, you guys. And I feel bad because it's like I, I then I have to break it down and explain to them, like, oh no, so Cal Watch Reviews is just me, Miguel P. Ross has his own account and his own right. thing, but we collaborate on the podcast, you know, and and 
just putting it out there for everybody, all the new listeners, new people watching. So SoCal Watch Reviews will start it by me and my my friend P. Ross is a member of the SoCal Watch Reviews podcast. But go show him some love because he does mm-hmm. have his own, you know, thing going yeah. on, you know, on yeah. Instagram and on YouTube. So, but yes, with that sir. said, SoCal Watch Reviews for me on on uh, YouTube on Instagram and um, of course the Facebook group that P actually yeah. manages that. Cause I don't, it's been a while since I've been on there, but I should definitely be more active on there. And then Relojeando is my Spanish channel. I haven't uploaded because I've been so busy on my English one, but it is growing. We're almost at a thousand subscribers there. So I got to keep showing it some more love. It's a lot of work. <laughs> and yeah. uh, it, Alton, any parting words? Hey guys, just keep doing what you're doing. I I love what you're doing. You guys are awesome dudes. I'm so appreciative that you'd have me on. This was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. All right. Well, hey, thank you. Thank you for coming on. We'll have you on anytime, my friend, seriously. And we look forward to all your success and the, and the show should be fun. So definitely go support my man. Do you know, is it going to air on your channel or Dave's channel or I uh, would assume Dave's because he's kind of heading it up, but I don't know. We're, okay, cool. Those guys are so busy, so talking to them is difficult in different time zones. And I get it. I but get we're going to make it happen. Sounds good. Well, best of luck to you. Cool. Best of luck to you guys. P. Ross, thank you once again. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Our new thing. Yeah. <laughs> They'll sprinkle some sugar. And uh, anyway, everybody listening, thank you so much and stay humble. <laughs>